Oh, I accidentally turned off the camera. <laughs> JD Niger, Word of Truth, San Clemente State Beach. There's the ocean. The flags are blowing offshore. I'm probably going to go see if there's any waves here after. I'm probably going to do two messages on this, and we're going to move into it right now because I talk too much. Heavenly Father, bless my brothers and sisters. Bless the ears that hear this lesson. Give us faith. Give us hope. Give us strength. Give us your spirit. It's important to have the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we were talking about Israel, and I was going into Deuteronomy 29. And it talks about this covenant with Israel. How you know you're Israel is you'll have this different, you'll have a different, let me sit up, you'll have a different take on the Bible. You won't see it as carnal at all. I'm, I'm starting to see that now. It's like, man, there's nothing carnal. There's nothing fleshy in this Bible that's going to save you. You're not going to. Sin, sin isn't what you think it is. Sin is a lot more subtle than you think. Sin is turning away from your God, and I'm going to show you that right now. Let me keep reading. So, they're in the wilderness, and Moses is telling them, "You've seen everything that the Lord's done for you. What, what, what's wrong? You still can't, you still can't get it. You can't perceive." So. The word perceive that my people go into that word a lot, perceive, because it's different than just seeing. You can see, but can you perceive? Can you understand what you're seeing? So let's see what it says about this word perceive. Um, 29.4, it means to understand. You can see, you can see the words on this page. You can read the words. But can you understand? That's what he's saying. And that's that's what gets me so upset all the time is that a lot of people are seeing the words and reading the words, but they don't understand what it's saying. And I'm going to try not to beat these dummies up. I, I can't, I can't do it anymore. It's not right. All I can do is pray. All we can do is pray for these people to um, to open their heart. Your eyes are open, but your heart is closed. If you can't understand these things that I'm saying. I don't know why this guy's taking his board off. There's no waves down here. Maybe he's not. Anyway, let me continue. Yet the Lord has not given you the heart to perceive and eyes to see and ears to hear unto this day. You don't you still don't understand to this day. No one understands. And that's that's oh, that's our problem out here is we have all these people pointing at things in the world on the earth. Point towards things in heaven. Point where's heaven? Heaven is in your heart. That's when you're content with yourself. And see, this is what's happening to me right now. Um, I'm coming back into this love for my own spirit. I love my spirit. And it's so awesome. I'm going, thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving me the spirit to see deeper and to know, see further and know deeper. These are the things that we need to look at. You can talk all day long and you can go, oh, this means this and this, uh-huh. And you better repent and sins, sins at your doorstep. Talk about beautiful things. Talk about loving each other. Talk about contentment in your life. Can talk, talk about peace in your heart. Talk about love for your brother, love for your God, love for your family, love for your neighbor. Come on, man. It's not hard. It's not hard, Israel. Believers, it's not that hard. Once it once it starts welling up in you, glory to glory, you 
once you reach one level, you reach another level. That's the uh, the story of the talents. I'm going to start reading because I'm just going to keep, <laughs> I'm going to just keep jumping into this and that and the other. I want to get to this. Um, and I have led you through the wilderness. You're, you're still at peace. Your clothes are still good. You have not eaten bread, neither have you drunk wine or strong drink that you might know that I am the Lord your God. What's that mean? What's Moses telling him? You haven't even sat down and said, where did this bread come from? Where did this coffee come from? Why is it so beautiful right now? Why, how did this happen? The Lord made it happen. Thank you, Lord. That's some good coffee. You are awesome. That's what he means. He's saying, have you thanked the Lord? Have you really said, man, I'm, I'm lucky. I have a great God. That's all he's saying. That's all, that's all the Lord wants. That's what Moses is saying. Listen to me, lovely people, Masha people. He wants you to love him. He wants you to thank him. He's wonderful to you. He gave you consciousness. Simple. Simplify it. We don't need to talk about repentance and sin and what's going on in Israel and bombs and bullshit and bogus bunk. You haven't, you haven't actually drank the strong wine. You haven't drank of any, you haven't even talked to each other about me. You guys don't even talk about me. Is what he's saying. Moses said, you guys don't even philosophize on who your God is. That's what strong drink is. That's philosophy. What's your belief system? What are you thinking? Strong drink isn't a bottle of tequila, people. Unless that's what you think it is, and then that's what it is. That you might know that I am the Lord your God. And when you came into this place, Sihon the king of Heshbon and Og the king of Bashan came out against you came out against us on the battle and we smote them and we took their land and gave it for an inheritance under the Reubenites and to the Gadites into the half tribe of Manasseh. Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that ye may prosper in all that you do. What's the words of the covenant? Trust your Lord to, to take care of you. This, this is important right here. He gave this land on the other side of the Jordan to the Reubenites and the, and the Manasites, the children of Joseph. This is that extra portion that was given because they trusted. The Reubenites and the Gadites and the Manasites, they trusted. They wanted that land. And these are the, to me, these are the, Christians that are saying, we want to go in. We want to go home. We want to, we want to, we want to, we're gonna. And that's what happened. They, they pushed their way in. They violently, harpazo, they were violently plucked up. They were violently plucked up out of the hands of these powerful people. The king of Bashan? Are you kidding me? That's what David talks about, the bulls of Bashan. These are powerful spiritual beings that were trying to keep Israel from getting their blessing. That's what we see out here compassing us all about is these bulls of Bashan, Gabar, Tahar, these fucking wicked black Hebrew Israelites. Um, Tony Williams doesn't understand. He's pushing hard against us and he doesn't even know. He wants to be with us, but he's pushing against us. Because he's just stupid. He just, he's arrogant and prideful. Drop your pride and start loving someone. Just love yourself. Love your God. It's not that difficult. Keep these, these words and you'll prosper. Um, Israel enters into covenant with God. Verse 10, same chapter 29 of Deuteronomy. You stand this day, all of you before the Lord your God, your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers with all the men of Israel. Here we are.
your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp, from the hewer of thy wood unto the drawer of thy water. Everybody that's part of our family, lovely Masha people of the Most High Bingimon people, Rasta, rise, Zion, that thou should enter into the covenant with the Lord thy God and into his oath, which the Lord thy God maketh with you this day, that he may establish you today for a people unto himself, and that he may be unto thee a God, as he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto his father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So what does Israel know? What do I know? What do I know that I can tell you? I know I'm of the tribe of Benjamin. I know I'm Israel. I know I'm of the southern kingdom of Judah. I know that I'm Adonijah in the regeneration. I know that he's my God. I know that he's my father. David is my father. Fourth son of David, Adonijah. Wicked as fuck. Tried to usurp the kingdom from Solomon. Had to be put to death. We'll go into that one day. You can look it up yourself. Check out who Adonijah is. Tell me anybody would want to be Adonijah. You tell me that. He told me I was Adonijah. I'm like, oh no. This probably isn't good. I look it up. I was all hopeful. Yeah, fourth, fourth son of David, but... So then I went back. See, I do this a lot. You'll notice I do this. Um... I'm not going to go forward anymore. I'm going to go back. So, plagues for disobeying. What happens when we don't when we don't obey? This is what happens. What do we what do, what should we be obeying? What should we be obeying? What what what's his law? Let him be your God. Let him be your God. Because he's going to be your God either way. He's, he is your God. So let him be your God. Let him take care of you. And be grateful that he loves you. Be in relationship with God. That's what he wants. Plagues for disobeying. Deuteronomy 28, 58. And, and if you will not observe, if you can't, if you can't see it, Observe. Look. Looky here. Looky here. Looky here. Observe. If you will not observe to do all the words of the law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God, in all caps, doesn't say Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. It doesn't say Yeshua Mashiach Bashila. It doesn't say anything. It says Adon it says the the Lord thy God is basically saying the terrible Shaddai, the one that can fuck you up. The one that created everything and can destroy everything. That's what it says. Glorious and fearful name. I will fuck you up. His name is STFU. Shut the fuck up and listen is what he's saying. If you're not going to, if you're not, if you're not putting me as your fucking conqueror, destroyer, lover, um, enemy, he's all those things. So what do you want to do? You want to make him your friend. You want to make him your lover, your wife. Your, you want to be part of the family. He's the one that's in charge, right? Not that difficult. Tony, you're not in charge, Tony. You don't tell people what to do, Tony. You tell them to listen to God, Tony, you fucker. Sorry. So tired of people thinking they can tell other people what to do. I'm not your God. I'm not your God. I'm your brother. I'm your fellow servant. That's all I am. A fellow fallen angel. Don't get up. Don't bow. You, we, bow we all bow to the Most High. We all will bow our heads. Anyway, back to the story. 
Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful and the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and a long continuance, a sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Let me see what I got. What's he mean? You're going to keep coming back sick. Long continuance. He said it twice. Not just not just one 68-year-old fucking tr little tr tr tromp through the field of this earth. Long, long, long continuance. Just like the continuance I've had here. It hasn't been no fun. I'm in this continuance. I keep coming back into this fucking hell. Trying to find heaven in myself. If I can find it in myself, I, I did it. I didn't come back here this last time. I volunteered to do this mission. Because I love you and I love my Lord. I'm not, I'm going to keep coming back until the story's over. Probably. I don't know. This It's feeling pretty good now, but it hasn't felt that good up until a few years ago. I mean, it's been a rocky road, people. Over and over I've come back to this nonsense. That's what he says. Even great plagues and a long continuance and sore sicknesses. You know what sickness is? Sickness is thinking you know something you don't know, like Tony Bologna saying Harpazzo and plucking up and we're all going to float up into the air and kumbaya party like it's 1999 high-fiving with three different gods up there that are doing a fucking circle jerk or some bullshit. That's not that's not what it is. I can tell you that's not what it is. Heaven is in you. Hell is in you. Which one do you which one are you going to serve? God or this these fucking other gods out here? These people trying to tell you what you need to do. You're a god. Do what you need to do. Sorry. <clears throat> Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. What are the diseases of Egypt, people? Brothers and sisters, lovely Masha people of the Most High. Bingy people, Rastafari. His majesty, what's his majesty going to do to you if you cling to Egypt, if you cling to this place? What are the plagues of this place? Lust, greed, war, violence, hatred, anger, fear, jealousy, Nonsense, confusion, retardation, de degeneration, uh, everything negative is Egypt. That's what the plagues are. So you look around and you look at Tahar and you look at Gabar and you look at the black Hebrew Israelites. You look at these pastors in these churches that are, are not all of them. I'm not, I'm not, I don't. I thought the Catholic Church was very willing to let you love God. They weren't, he didn't, he didn't fuck anything up, even though the building was creepy as hell. So I've seen, I've seen the dark spirits. They look like a sheet. They look like a black sheet. They look like a black sheet with four corners. Kind of. And when they move around, they turn into little triangles. Because they're moving. They like fold over or something. So they're like a black sheet. And they come in different sizes. And when they're spread out, the sides kind of dip in like. If you know what I'm saying. So anyway, at this, don't take it personally, Vaughn. I'm just telling you what I see, and I see what I see. They had these coverings over the lights that were um, looked exactly like these these dark spirits. I've seen them. They were they used to hang in my garage. They used to fly around my fucking condo. They were trying to get some. 
the guy that died there out of there, he would not leave. I ended up selling the thing because it's fucking... It was crazy. But anyway, and then they had the other light coverings that looked like the triangle. So when I'm talking about these plagues, there's things that are out here that are going on. That are so subtle. But anyway, let me let me get back to this. That's why we have to stay in a good mindset because I know sooner or later I'm gonna get tripped for sure. For sure. If I don't get tripped up and, and get snared by these devils, that'll be a miracle in itself. Um, also every sickness and every plague which is not written in the book of the law. Then will the Lord bring upon thee until you have been destroyed, and you shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of heaven for a multitude, because thou would not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Um, that's talking about me. Why am I here? Why am I? Why is there so few Benjamites? We'll go into this again too. That the two thousand swine that went down into the sea. Benjamites, uh, fallen angels, we have, we've been, we've been sent into the sea of people because I am this continuance. I am these plagues. I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm with you. I'm not, I'm not nowhere you're not, but the difference is in, in my heart, I know where I'm going. I know he's going to redeem me. I, I, he says right over here, he'll establish you in the day for a people unto himself. That's what we have to believe. And that he may be unto thee a God as that he said unto you. And as he has sworn unto your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he promised me. No matter how hard it gets, how stumbled I get, how I fall on my face and get snared in that trap. For now I surf, for now I speak, for now I camp, for now I'm thankful, for now I'm free. For now I'm free to tell you, get yourself free. <clears throat> Let me see what I got. Okay, so these plagues. What's it saying? You shall be left few in number. Benjamin, few in number. There's not too many of us. Whereas you were as the stars of heaven for multitude. There used to be a ton of Benjamites. We were, we were bad ass, bro. We were bad ass. We were the first kings of Israel under King Saul. We were the thumpers. Now we're just broken. Out here, pulverized, steamrolled, talking to 20 people instead of ruling over thousands. Um, Israel will be scattered. And then I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to um, go... Make my breakfast. I'm going to make some chorizo and egg this morning. Chorizo and egg burrito. With some onion. Yum. So I'm going to go into... Um... <laughs> this is some good shit right here. I can't believe the Lord opened me up to this yesterday. I'm like... I was sitting there on the bench just pondering going... Why? Why me? Why is he... Why is he... Giving me all this beautiful perception this this observance how can I observe how great he is why do I get to see it I want you all to see how wonderful he is and what his story really means what he's talking about this book isn't just for anyone man it's telling you it's not 
people will pick up this book and think they can tell you about it and they are just out of their cotton picking minds. They have lost their marbles. Poor Tony. Tony, bro. You need to get off your, your soapbox and teach something else. You need to learn some other things about the Bible besides Harpazzo, sin, repentance, and whatever other nonsense you're talking about. If you mention, if you mention the ten virgins one more time, I'm going to lose my fucking mind. You don't know what you're talking about, bro. You need to you need to round round up your thinking in STFU. It's teach people, teach what you know. And if you don't know anything, be quiet because you're all you're doing is confusing yourself and everyone else. All right, JD Nigel, word of truth. I'll be right back. We'll finish talking about Israel and um Deuteronomy because this is where the black Hebrew Israelites Oh man, they try. Look, you see the um the warship out there? Where is it? Where oh, you can't see it. Wow. That's weird. It's like stealth. Alright, I'll be back.